Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to another First Impression Friday where I review an entire sewing pattern collection. This week we are going to be looking at the brand new uh, collection from McCall's. This is their summer collection. Feels like a little bit late in the season to be releasing summer, but here we are nonetheless. Um, if you are new here, welcome. Please um, leave a comment and introduce yourself so that I can get to know you a little bit better and give you a formal welcome. I am Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes, a bit obsessed with garment sewing. I'm also a sewing teacher, sewing instructor, and sewing YouTuber. Okay, so our very first pattern, we're going to jump right in here. This is a asymmetric pullover dress with cutouts using a decorative ring. Dresses come in two bodice options. One has a draped sleeveless one shoulder, and the other has a wrap around free sleeve all in one bodice. This just looks really complicated to get into. Above knee and mid knee length variations. I also wanna point out this is the women's version of this dress. So this is their extended sizing, 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38. They chose a model, in my opinion, that looking at her, you think she looks like the average person, not necessarily like a plus size person. So I'm not entirely sure how that is going to resonate with the plus size community. Like, do you guys see yourself in her? Um, she might even be like smaller than me. I don't know if this is just like a super flattering photo, but like, she, I mean, I don't know. She, I'm not getting women's sizing vibes from her um not that it's the model's fault at all i'm just wondering if they could have chosen someone who was a little bit on the higher end of the sizing um, to make it very clear that this was made for the extended sizing all right so the pattern itself though you can see it has that decorative ring that they talk about and then there is a side seam but all of this bodice comes around your neck and becomes a sleeve so getting into this thing, I gotta imagine, is not for the faint of heart. Um, but then it has this separated skirt area, so you get a little bit of midriff showing also, and then a fitted skirt. I'm also guessing this is for knits. So here is the version the girl was just wearing. It looks a little bit different from the front, huh? Here is the sleeveless version. Here is the back. Okay, so this is where the ring is on the other side on the front. This is the wraparound neck. And then this is all one piece. This has got to be a fabric hog. Um, and then the back looks a little bit like, is it supposed to be pulling and I don't know, creating that, this weird like diagonal fold? Is that supposed to happen? And then on the skirt, the skirt looks great. The skirt looks wonderful. I wish we could see it dead on from the front. And this is a great photo. I agree that it shows all the cutouts, but I do want to see it from the front. And I also want to see it from the left. Like I know they take tons of pictures of these things. So I wish they could just put more of them up on the site. But yeah, you can see there's one little seam here in the back neck, but all of this Coming into that is one piece, and then all of this sleeve is also one piece. So interesting looking pattern pieces, I'm sure. But it is really cute, and I'm getting like summer nights, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> not on the beach somewhere, maybe in a nightclub, like I'm getting all of those vibes. It is really cool. So two-way stretch knits only, such so as jersey, interlock, or velvet. And then a three and a half inch ring or purse handle, one and a quarter inch wide elastic, three and almost four yards of that for A and B, which have the sleeve. So I'm guessing the elastic, mm, A and B, and then three and an eighth for C. So imagining it's done, it's this neckline, I think, or maybe, you know, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking it's one of those things where you use the elastic to help keep the fabric like tight and close to your body, like you do when making underwear 
or bathing suits or lingerie. I think that's what all of this elastic is for. So I like to see that. Um, we have finished, nope, these are body measurements. Finished width is all they're giving us. Finish width on the lower edge. So we're not getting any finished measurements and maybe that's because it's a fitted knit dress. So they think it would be confusing to see negative ease. I'm not sure, but it does go from a 42 inch bust to a 60 inch bust and then a 44 inch hip to a 62 inch hip. Okay. All right, very good. And then the next pattern on the list is just the Mrs. version of the same dress. They put her in the same view. Now this is also something that I have to nitpick with them. I, if you're going to make two versions, one for a Mrs., one for a women's, show us two different views. Give us the sleeveless version so that we can see what that looks like. Um, maybe even if it isn't like we see it on a body that looks like ours, at least we can still visualize what it could look like better than just having to imagine it. We also are not getting a dead front photo from her. And then there's the back that still does have this like little wrinkling situation. So I'm guessing that's maybe due to everything being like um, put around this ring. I mean, that definitely has to create some kind of gathers. So I'm assuming that that's what that is. But yeah, no photos from dead on front. But it is really, really cool and fun and cute. And like, I don't know, I think I think a variety of different um ages could wear it different styles if you do like a solid or a print or something special occasion something a little bit more casual i think it's really cool and then i also think you could play around with the skirt a little bit and flare it out a little if you want yeah i really like this one now also remember mccall's is sort of catering to a younger demographic i always look at them like the Gen Z pattern company. Um, but that doesn't mean that we as older millennials or, or even older than that can't rock some of these sort of younger person trends. And that's a good example of it. This is another one. So this is a short and ankle length gathered dress with midriffs and tucks. Views include bodice with narrow shoulder straps and a halter bodice. So this has these beautiful, like sweetheart um, neckline bodice cups or bust cups, almost like a bathing suit would have. And then you have this bodice section here. So you're creating like a defined waist, all the highest point of your waist, which is usually the narrowest part. Um, and then you have all these, they're not layers though, they're tucks. So these all separate from the skirt. You know what I mean? They create like an actual like fold in the skirt. And then down here is where your ruffle begins. And then that also has tucks. Talk about a fabric hog. And then this is the one with the spaghetti straps. That's the halter version. Now this, this and the last one, the last illustration, give me a lot more like movement in the skirt than we're getting from the version that they made. And I don't know if that's because the version they made is out of a little bit stiffer of a fabric. And if you use something more in the rayon family, you'll get like a little bit more flary, ruffly skirt. I don't know. Yeah, and the fact that this is a bit of a mermaid is also an interesting choice. I can't say that I love that about it. I don't not love it. <laughs> I don't know, this is a confusing one. It could be this fabric. It could be this fabric too. But this is the back, it actually comes down pretty low. Um, you wouldn't wear, be able to wear a bra with it in the front anyways. Um, so you would have to either sew in some bust cups there for like modesty, like basically nipple covers. Um, or get one of those like low front, low back bras. 
but yeah, I'm not getting the same like flirty movement um, out of this one as I see in the illustration. So yeah, maybe this um, extra tier is kind of weighing it down a little bit. I don't know. I, I think I like it from here up and then this just becomes like a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I'm on the fence on this one. Here are our line drawings. See, the line drawings don't make it look like a mermaid. It makes it look like one straight continuous line. But when, you can see here that it's definitely like coming in. This is like not a straight line. This is actually like, you know, got a little pivot to it. So something happened here that maybe the gathers weren't um, matched up correctly. But I think if it was sewn as intended like this, I would like it a lot more. I also think for what it's worth, maybe I'm trying to think why they wouldn't have done it this way, but I'm thinking you could just extend this even further. Maybe it gets too wide for your fabric. I don't know. Um, and then just continue the same process that you're doing for these tucks and just do it one, two, three, four more times and not do the separate gathered piece. Just a thought. Okay, here's the back of the envelope. So cotton blends, lawn, gingham, and chalet. Some interfacing, and then an invisible zipper for the back. This is sizes six to 24. Interfacing. Is this an ounce? This is an interesting way to chart it. I haven't seen it like this before. So the different interfacing amounts, I'm guessing it's for the bodice. Oh, and what else I didn't notice is that the halter top is not a deep V, but it has the same like deep back. So if you don't want to show any cleavage, you could make the bodice version, but I still think you would have to get some kind of convertible bra for the back. Okay. Um, and then the dress. Yeah, so the maxi version is five and a quarter yards of fabric. Maybe that's why they made their sample out of something that just was very affordable, even though it wasn't like perfect, perfect for the pattern. But then the shorter versions are two yard wonders. So that's good. And then the finished waist measurement, which is really the most fitted part, certainly the skirt is somewhat irrelevant in terms of hips. Um, the bodice should have a little bit of ease, but not a ton. But yeah, this waistband for sure is fitted. So 48 to 63 and a half. And that puts it at, oh wait, 48. That's not right. That's not right. That Maybe that's supposed to be the, oh, is it though? Because the hip, I mean, the waist is like technically down here in these gathers somewhere. I'm not sure about this. I would measure the, what do they call it? The, shoot, the midriff. I would measure this part on my body and then measure this pattern piece. And that's how I would choose my size. Maybe one or two inches of ease in there added. Yeah. Okay. Next. We have a little like, I don't know, prairie festival type of number. Pullover V-neck dress in two lengths, has three quarter sleeve variations with or without cuffs. So they made this in cotton gingham. You have this like front, I don't know, panel type thing and then all this this is all your sleeve all comes into these gathers here I we've seen this I don't know if it was an indie pattern or what but we've seen this recently in one of these first impression videos um, and then it all gathers into this cuff here and then hers is a bit of a midi length and then we have this one is supposed to be giving the vibes of like a fabric that's a little bit drapier and they've added a ruffle to the bottom and then left off the cuffs. So you just have a very wide flowy sleeve. There's another version. This one kind of looks like a nightgown if I'm being honest. And then you have this full length version, which I kind of love. I really like that one. I know it's going to be a ton of fabric, but um, 
yeah, this just feels so easy and breezy and light and comfortable in these hot, humid temperatures. Um, perfect vacation dress, like whether you're going to a beach or anywhere. Um, yeah, I really like this one. Here's the back. I don't know what I expected the back to look like. This isn't it, but <laughs> it doesn't look bad. It's just <laughs> not what I envisioned, I guess, um, subconsciously. But, uh, but yeah, so you have the little panel thing mimicked in the back and then sleeve again goes into that, um, the side of the panels. Okay. Here are our line drawings. The, yeah, the line drawings do read a little nightgowny, but I think depending on your fabric, I don't know. The, the samples they made didn't look like a nightgown, so I think you'd be okay as long as you didn't do anything super pastel, super floral. Let's check out the back of the envelope. Gingham, cotton blends, poplin, and sateen. Oh sateen i go lighter weight like into the um rayon category before i'd go into sateen personally um alphanumeric sizing on this one extra small to 2xl fabric requirements yeah are all in the four to five yard range but even d um the maxi length version is only five eighths of a yard more than the plainest version C. So, I mean, I'd probably make the maxi version and just have something really like, like a gown, you know what I mean? So the waist measurement on this, which all, I mean, honestly, all, this is a loose fitting garment. So all of this is sort of it's hard to just look at the body measurements and then this measurement and still know what size you're supposed to make out of this one. But nonetheless, the waist measurements go from 48 and a half up to 66. But I'd still use the fast fit worksheet linked in my description box to find out what the pattern ease is and then use your best judgment. Like I imagine the bodice of this has got to have I bet they put in like 10, 12 inches of ease. I'd probably be somewhere more comfortable in the six to eight range. So I'd probably be sizing down quite a bit just because I don't want to be swallowed. Also, you could make a muslin of just this little plackety part to make sure that the neckline and all of that was going to fit well. And then the edges of this, um, of this like front bib should be going over the apex of your bust. So maybe make a muslin of this to determine the width of this between, or measure your bust apex, you know, and um, the distance between them and make your size according to that. It's an odd way <laughs> to size a garment, but I think so long as this um, seam here goes over your bust apex on both sides and your neckline is not super droopy and this isn't hanging off your shoulder if all of that is happening which is all in this little bib you should be good to go so that's probably what i would do either tissue fit the bib make a little muslin of it something like that you also want to make sure that this seam here is going fully under your bust my best tips for this guy okay next we have oh she's cute Mrs. Tunic and Dress. A lot of these are feeling very early fall also, right? Maybe that's kind of indicative of how late in the season they're releasing these patterns. Like their fabrication is reading very fall, you know, um, and a lot of long sleeves, which we are not really wearing in the dead of summer. So pullover, button front, pin tuck, tunic and dresses come in two lengths. These include short sleeve, puff sleeve with tucks, and three-quarter sleeve with elasticized hem. Tunic has lower gathered ruffle. View B is tiered with decorative trim. View C is above the knee length, above the knee length with trim, which I think is what she's wearing. Yes, all of this trim here, all of these pin tucks, button front placket, and again, similar situation where it has the bib, but you do actually have like a bodice going around that and then a set-in sleeve being sewn into that. 
Also, this is probably bias bound finishing, a little bit trickier. And then you have this seam here, which is supposed to be at your natural waist. For her, as you can see by where her fingers are, this should probably be up here. Um, and then the second tier, and then you can see how short it is. Um, also, is this supposed to be bracelet length way down here, or is it a 7 8 sleeve? It didn't say that in the description, so. This one I think is supposed to be eyelet. Is that illustration of eyelet? And this, again, looks a little dropped, so maybe it is supposed to be a little bit of a dropped waist. Did it say that? Pull over. No, it doesn't. But we'll look at the line drawings and see how those look. Um, this is an interesting fabric choice for the illustration, but you can see the pin tuck sleeve here, and you get a really good view of kind of the stitching that goes into this bib with the trim and the pin tucks and the button placket and then no other seams anywhere so all of this is all one pattern piece yeah i think it can go a little like little girly pretty quick so just be mindful of that with your fabric choice i think that's the reason why this one feels a little odd because it looks like it should go on like a five-year-old not like a woman here's the back nice and plain yeah it is really cute I love the length I love the kind of oversized pullover quality of it all I think because it is a pullover these buttons are not functioning I'm imagining I'd have to get into the pattern instructions to tell for sure but yeah, and this does look like a bit of a drop waist. So I think that how it fit the model is really good. And honestly, I could see myself making all three of these versions. This one, I would want to make sure that the that their proportions were right for me. Like, I don't like tunics that go past my bum. Um, I'd like them to hit kind of like, I don't know, like the lower part of my high hip. If that makes sense but I could see myself wearing all three of these versions. Super cute, okay. So gingham, cotton blends, poplin, sateen. Yeah, I'd also throw in like chambray. Um, probably wouldn't wanna do pen tucks on anything super lightweight or silky or any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, these make sense. Um, you also make five buttons or you get five buttons, uh, elastic. For the wrist, uh, decorative trim, more elastic for C. I'm guessing just more goes into the sleeve. I don't know. Um, and then decorative trim there too. Also new alphanumeric sizing on this one as well. Extra small to 2XL. Um, it fits up to a 48 inch bust, 50 inch hip. Two to four yards of fa two and a half to four yards of fabric, depending on which version. View B is the one the model was wearing. It's almost four yards of fabric for the largest size. Finished bust again. This bust and waist and hip, all three of them are going to be very loose fitting. So it's really hard to just look at this number and then this number and know what to make. But it does look like they have, I mean, like eighteen inches of ease in the bust. That's a lot. Um, for something like this, I'd probably come down to like maybe 12 inches, but again, you can use this bib, um, as sort of a jumping off point for fitting, fit the bib and then choose your size based on that. All right. Next we have more ruffled tiered dresses this is like what our third one we've seen so far pull on open tie back elasticized dresses have gathered skirts view a has narrow shoulder strap bodice and is above knee length views b and c have drop shoulders elasticized neckline and back yoke and are mid calf length 
View B is sleeveless. View C has three quarter sleeves with elasticized hem. Okay, a lot to take in there. Um, is this the elasticized neckline? I guess so. Drop shoulder, sleeveless, little waist seam here, and then some gathered skirt. Okay. I wasn't getting that strong of a gathering due to the elastic, but I guess it's a casing. So you'd probably be able to scrunch up or let out the um, elastic as much as you want. But this is the three quarter sleeve with the elastic. I think an elasticized neckline could be cool. This is the one with a spaghetti strap. So, or what do they call it? Narrow straps, square neckline. And then this one has vertical bodice seams, whereas this one does not. I don't think hers did either. So two totally different bodices, if you ask me. And then here's the back, very vintage vibes, right? Don't you get like 1940s, 50s out of this? There is elastic through here and down here as well. And then you have this big bow, which I think if you did a little bit of magic, you could figure out how to sew this without the bow. Like if you're just not a bow person and just either have this be a strap across the back, that'd be the easiest. Um, you could also have it just be open, like a full circle open in the back. Let's look at the line drawings. Are all three of them like that? Yes. So I think this one is really sweet to have a bow right here. That feels cute and fun. Good, like, I'm picturing like a birthday dress or like a bachelorette party dress or even like color blocking, like maybe like monotone colors, but in light, medium, and dark. Like, I don't know baby pink, magenta, and red or something. I, I'm just seeing that. Um, and then this version I'm seeing just like solids. I like all the elastic, I think. This didn't read, this bow reads bigger in person than it does in this illustration. And I think that's kind of what was throwing me off on this photo here is that it's a massive <laughs> bow on her. Um, maybe it's because she's just so narrow as a person that this looks so big. I don't know. Um, so I'm on the fence about the bow on this one. This one, I love it. It feels appropriate. This feels like, I don't know, it's like modern in the front. And then you just like, we they were like, we need to figure out a way to, you know, get them into this. And how are they going to close it? And then they were like, just, just tie it in a bow. You know, and I, I don't know, I'm just like, uh, they don't match. Like this person doesn't match a person that would wear a bow, right? But I do like it. It's very unique and different. We don't see a lot of elasticized necklines at all ever. Um, and like I said, this is, these are two very different bodices. All right, let's look at the line drawings. We've got Batik. Now, you don't see that as a suggestion very often, but I can see that being stunning. Cotton blends, linen, and sateen. Yeah, for sure. All of those. Um, one package of bias tape for your sleeve, I think. Wait, yeah, maybe for the sleeve. Also, elastic for the neckline. For the neckline. And then for the backs, I think. Sizes 6 to 24. Um, three to four yards of fabric, depending on the version you're making. Lots of fabric hogs here, so you got to stock up when you see some of those good fabric sales. And then no real um, finished measurements, which is, again, interesting because they've been giving them to us on these loose-fitting patterns, but then the ones that actually have a fitted somewhat fitted bodice they aren't giving them to us like this one has a fitted waist we should at least have the waist on this one so i'm not sure what's happening there why we aren't seeming to get them when it doesn't matter and then don't get them when it does matter 
I guess I shouldn't be too hard on them since we're getting at least some, right? There was a time when we never got any on anything. So I guess I should be a little bit relieved. But okay, this is a hot mess. But <laughs> they describe it as pull on romper and jumpsuits have elasticized waist, v neck and dolman sleeves. Views A and B have purchased lace trim and ruffle details. View C has elastic hem. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I, I need to organize my thoughts here. One, I think that the line drawings on this one are actually going to look really cute. I think that the fabrication here of this, like, cornflower blue and white lace trim is just reading a little kind of all over the place and then they put this like like woven belts on with it and I'm just yeah I don't know plus this looks really low on her right the length like I don't think her crotch is down to where her fingertips are right I mean it's putting it right at her knuckles I think if we all stood up that's not where our crotches would be I imagine it's up here somewhere so that's a little interesting um, that it's just so long in the rise. Um, okay, is this better? Hmm. It does have an elastic casing, so that's got to help a little bit. Okay, I'm imagining, take it back to when I was like 17, 15, maybe. <laughs> Would I think this is cool? If I walked into H&M and I saw this, would I be like, oh, I have to have it. I feel like it's a little bit of a, like a boutique, you know, kind of design, something you'd find in one of those like silly little boutiques where everything's made out of polyester. Oh, and then you have this one when you leave off the trim. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's just like the extra wide trim that's throwing me off. I don't know. But this one, they did elasticize the ankle. And then you have the wide. Okay, so I think this one is universally, like, a lot of people will like this, wear this, look fabulous in this. But I appreciate the fact that they tried something new and different. Let's check out the rise here. Because you can see where her bust, her, her seat apex is I guess that's what you would call it and there's no way it's what five four or five inches below her seat apex no way I, I would be inclined to try this trim version I don't know if lace trim is the way I would go I would probably also do something monochromatic where this was white and this was also white I think it could be cool. I think this is just a bad example of it. That's mean to say, but I said it. So <laughs> there you go. Can't take it back. <laughs> um, I Truthfully, truthfully, I don't hate it. I think it's going to take a lot of creativity, a lot of like, um, imagination for people to see this in a wearable way. So maybe after people who see the vision um, start making it, it will be one of those that kind of catches on. But these are very different looks through and through. You could make this version and this version and it would look like two totally different patterns. I, I do appreciate that about it. The views are different enough from each other. Like when the views are just like variations in length, it's almost like, yeah, I could have just done that myself. Like I, just, I could just chop off the hem myself. I don't really need a whole separate view for that. So this one, I appreciate the fact that they all look very different and they were really thoughtful about, okay, if we're going to add a separate view, what can we do to make it look different from the one before it? You know, like this one has the angled um trim which makes it very different from this one that has the horizontal trim and then this one has the ankle elastic whereas this one has the wide leg and then you can also like 
add the trim, but only on the sleeves down here, you know? Or even with these versions. I think it could be cute. I really, really do. Um, okay, gauze, stable knits, chalet, and crepe. Okay. So they're going lighter weight. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, fabrication is definitely going to be something to consider for sure. I think that I think that the lighter weight makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree with this. Okay, three hooks and eyes. Literally no idea where those go. Um, you should just be able to pull this thing on. I don't know why you need hooks and eyes. I don't know where those go. Again, maybe up the center front. Um, one, a little bit of half inch wide elastic. That's for the waist. And then this is your lace trim and then elastic for the ankle. Alphanumeric sizing again. Fabric is two and five eighths up to a little bit more than four yards, depending on the version that you want to make. And then finished measurements, again, very loose fitting, but we're getting bust and hip. The waist is taken in by the elastic, so in a way that's adjustable, so I get why they didn't include that there. All right. All right, now we have this little number. Oh, good grief. Okay, all right. You know, there comes a point, there's like a tipping point in these first impression videos where I can be so nice and find like the good only for so long. And then I just am like, no holds barred. We might have reached that point with this one. Oh man. I, I, okay, I have thoughts. Let me read the description first. Capped, caftigan style romper and jumpsuits with sash have front opening with hook and eyes. Okay, so the last one didn't say that, but the description or the back of the envelope said you needed them. So I wonder if those got mixed up somehow. Views B and C have opening for sash to pull through. View C has arm opening at shoulder line for a cowl drapey look and has elasticized hems. Okay, now pretend that we are looking at Vogue patterns. Would we be thinking of this as a little bit more of a high fashion, Vogue-esque kind of deal? And will we give it more of a pass if we think of it that way? Is it because this is in the mix of all of these like youthful, frilly, you know, lots of gathers and tears? Is it because it's just such a stark difference from that is why it's so jarring? Not to mention the color and the shine of this fabric is like, I mean, you guys, it's a construction cone. Like there's no two ways about it. She's like, she's like a very ritzy rich construction worker yeah um okay all of that aside trying to analyze this for what it is we have the hooks and eyes going to the center front like they said rounded like um necklace collar neck line what is that called and then your big oversized bat wing caftan style sleeve nipped in with this belt which goes through and through like there's a hole in the sleeve for you to be able to put the belt through it's this for me like this in particular this one little point right here you can just clearly see that this is her leg and then this is the pant so it's giving mc hammer pants like, if this were a little bit more tailored and smoother, maybe their proportions would feel right. But this feels like 
bad pleated pants. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. The crotch seems okay, but also still really long. You can tell maybe she's popping her knee. So um, we've got some pulling here, but I think that that's also because there is just, it's just too long and it's kind of pulling from the back to the front. And then you've got your hem. This is the illustration, which looks cuter. This is interesting to me. So it's a caftan romper. Imagine a caftan with a crotch. That concept is very cool. That execution on that girl we just saw is not super cool. But I think this could be cool. So this is this this is the version the girl was wearing. She just didn't have the elasticized ankle, but this is what she's wearing from the ankle up. And I genuinely, I'm not lying. I swear I'm not lying. I kind of like this. I hate what she's wearing, but this, I can see what they were thinking. I can see the vision on this. See this? What is this? What is that? No, that's a, that's a no. That's what that is. Um, and then they're like, here, try and smooth it down with your hand. Hold your hand there in this super awkward way. But then how it's like pointy here again. That's not in that illustration. And then you can see just how much extra fabric is living underneath her. <laughs> Um, just way, way, way too long in the rise, I think. Or in the, actually not in the rise, but maybe the crotch length. So here are our line drawings. You can see there's no intention of any kind of like bubbling out situation. It's supposed to be straight down. So some things going on in the execution of that orange version. You guys are going to call me crazy. If you've been here for a couple of years, you remember the crinkle rayon jumpsuit. This is going to take y'all right back to that, where I think that that is, was really cute. And I loved that um, jumpsuit so much. And so many of you were like, this is just a no, Lindsay. It's a no. Um, but I don't know, maybe something about me really likes these kind of like weird jumpsuits. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I really do. Okay, so crepes, stable knits, chalet, and gauze is all that they're recommending? I mean, I guess. Also, can I please just point out where is that silky shiny satin orange fabric in this list nowhere i don't see anything silky i don't see anything like shiny none of this is shiny so i don't know maybe after they made it they were like yeah that was a bad fabric choice let's not throw that on the list okay so this one they're saying 10 hooks and eyes whereas the other one was just three so maybe that is correct um, and then elastic for the little ankle, alphanumeric sizing. And again, to make sure you're not swimming in this, really, truly double check ease. And I mean, size down even two sizes if you're not somebody who like looks good with lots of fabric. There are some people who can pull off lots and lots and lots of ease. Um, and then there are some who can't. So the tie is going to do all the work for you. So you really just have to make sure that the neckline sits at the right place. The, the, um, bat wing sleeve isn't too short or too high or yeah, too short or too long. Um, then trip 
full check this crotch length. And maybe even base your size off of the crotch length. That's not a terrible idea. I think this could be really good, but it can very easily be really bad. So maybe that's why. It's just a bit of a risky project. All right, so view A is five yards. Use B, they're both five yards. All these fabric hogs, my goodness. All right, finished garment measurements don't really matter here. Okay, so now that we're through that one, please, Lord, give me something good. Okay, not terrible. I can work with this. Open back crop tops have short three-quarter and long sleeves. Hook and eye back opening. View A has lacing back. View B ties back. View C has crisscross back. Ties to front. Separate pattern pieces for cup sizes. This seems like an, an odd place to put that, but all right, I'll take it when I can get it, right? So we have a woven crop top, bias bound neckline, elastic hem, set in sleeve, long sleeve with a little bias binding there. This must be the crisscross back that ties in the front. This is the three quarter sleeve, I guess. They all look the same except for the sleeve so far. This is where they start to look different. So we've got the hook and eye in the back, which I think three of these, you should be able to handle closing that on your own. Right? Like it's like a necklace. We could handle that, right? This beautiful like scooped design here. And then this is the one. So this is not elastic. This is just a casing. And then it crisscrosses and ties in the front. Super cute. R really? That's all you're going to show us? You showed us three illustrations of the front, which literally all look the same. And <laughs> didn't show us any illustrations of the back. I don't understand how y'all's mind works. All right. So this one is the same as the one we just saw. This is the one we saw. This is the one she's wearing. So it still does the um, hook and eye up through here. But this one has little loops and it crisscrosses down. And then this one crisscrosses up. Is that really the only difference? Okay. I kind of thought there was going to be more to it than that, but I guess not. All right. Well, <laughs> um, that was kind of anticlimactic. Uh, Charmeuse. Okay, I can actually see it in Charmeuse. Shally, cotton blends, three hook and eyes, six to 24 in the sizing, body measurements, fabric um, requirements, one and a half to just about two yards, depending on your sleeve, I think. It's got a very big sleeve. Hopefully they have, here's the finish measurements for the bust, up to 49, 50, 51, depending on your cup size. Hopefully they've made like a little short or a little um, skirt or even like a little pant that looks really good with this. I do like it with the elasticized waist pants, which I'm sure we all have like 50,000 versions of. For a while there during the pandemic, they were throwing elasticized waist pants in with every pattern. They were like, <laughs> elasticized pants for you, elasticized pants for you. Like every single pattern included them. Okay, Mrs. Knit Tops and Shrug. This is taking me back. Pull over, knit top, view A is halter top with ring. View B is an asymmetric one shoulder top with double straps. View C is tank style with cutouts and purchase rectangle ring. View D is a bolero jacket with long sleeves. If this is in early 2000s, I don't know what is. This reminds me of that movie with Cameron Diaz where she's like going cross country with her friends to like break up a wedding. It's very vulgar. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, okay. So it also looks a little like dance leotard-esque. Maybe that's also what I'm picking up on. 
They threw the bolero on over the tank top. You know what this is? Without the bolero and this extended down is the pretty woman dress. It's the dress that she wears in the beginning of the movie when she's the paid sex worker. <laughs> I'm trying to be PC. Um, with the knee-high white patent leather boots, that's this dress. So you could make a Halloween costume from this. That's not a total loss. This is like, yes, Mandy Moore probably wore this in her candy music video. Like, I'm just going right back to that time. Early 2000s for sure. Like, I'm pretty sure I owned this at one point. Probably got it from like Limited. But there's the tank top without the bolero. Here is the back, which is interesting. I kind of thought the back would be just like the front, but no, it comes into this actual like seam here, which is very interesting. And then there it is with the bolero. She looks so unhappy. Yeah, wow, okay. Yeah, hmm, this is either, like, all the girlies, like, all of the people 15 to 25 are going to look at this and go, yes, oh my god, that's the cutest thing, it's the best pattern I've ever seen, I must have this, please make it for me, or I'll make it myself. I just don't see anybody over the age, well, that's not true. You guys have to let me know your thoughts on this one. Am I being ageist? Am I thinking it's just like just for young people and not for anybody else? I don't know. I just feel like everybody over the age of 25 has already been there, done that with this. And maybe the bolero was like a last minute, like throw that in to make it like a little bit more inclusive of everyone. But it doesn't feel like this is going to be something every single person sees and wants and has to make. Um, Two-way knits such as jersey, interlock, and rib knit. 6 to 24 on the sizing. One yard wonder. Love that. Except for the little shrug, which is one and a half. And then here are your finished garment measurements. It is fitted, but it is also knit. So we should see a little bit of negative ease, which we do. Half an inch of negative ease on the bust. Okay. Here we have, I feel like we've seen tops like this a thousand times, right? Like, are we done with the baby doll tops after this? Learn to sew pin tucks. Okay, well, okay. Pullover pin tuck blouses have back opening. Is this a learn to sew pattern? I'll check the cover, will tell me. Um, view A, pin tucks are stitched horizontally in alternating directions. Top have ruffle, short, and puff sleeves. View C has a lower ruffle. So are they saying learn to sew pin tucks because they actually like teach you them? Because in that case, fine, I'll buy another baby doll top pattern. This Swiss dot is so sweet. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, and this has the ruffle sleeve. Okay. Here is pin tucks just sewn vertically and your standard sleeve. This has the little puff sleeve with the ruffle on the bottom. All super cute. And then this one again was pin tucks but sewn vertically and horizontally, I think is what they were saying. Here's the back, just a little keyhole opening. Very simple, straightforward little top. It does look like there is like a 
like a version of a princess seam and that the sleeve is sewn into that on this version. That's a neat detail. Like it has little side panels. Yeah, they all do actually. It's a cute top. Okay, fine. I would think I would love it in a gingham. I would love it in a stripe would be super fun because the stripe would get all like messed up in here. Um, yeah, okay, fine. It's a cute top. <laughs> Even though we've seen this kind of like style where it's fitted through the shoulder and upper bust and then flares out at the upper bust. We've seen that a million times, but this one does feel a little bit different, a little bit different. Okay, lawn, cotton blends, chalet, dotted Swiss, some interfacing, hooks and eyes. Um, again, they're calling for three of them. I don't know why you'd need three, but okay. Um, single fold bias tape to help with that arm side, I think. Elastic and then double fold extra wide bias tape also for C. Not entirely sure where that goes. Um, alphanumeric sizing, extra small to 2XL. Here are your body measurements. The interfacing, you just need a little bit. So it must be like for three eighths of a yard, maybe. Mm, I, oh, is there like a facing or something? I don't know. Um, and then two yards, about two yards, about two yards. So roughly two yards for all of them, which makes sense because this is so wide. The whole bodice is very wide. And then the bodice measurements, the finish measurements are really kind of negligible on this one too. Nothing super fitted in this entire collection. Okay, now we have a little, what do you know, tiered gathered skirt, pull on elastic waist gathered and tiered boho skirts and two lengths are finished with narrow hems. You see has contrast tiers. Yeah, we're not rewriting the the book on this, this has been done a million times, sort of fitted through the hip, flares out at the low hip, and then you've got all these tiers. Many, many tiers. Elastic waist under that belt, like this. Um, here is one where you alternate the fabric. That's very, like, hippy-dippy festival vibe. It's a lot of tears. It might leave you in tears. <laughs> She's got jokes. Okay. Cotton blends, lawn, chalet, and gingham. Elastic for the waistband. Alphanumeric sizing up to 2XL. Two and a quarter yards. Look at this. View B has almost six yards of fabric. And then view C has three and a half of your main and two and a half of your contrast. That's a lot. That's a lot. But I guess it probably is very comfortable. I don't know that I'd wear it at elastic. I'm trying to think, would it be cute with that little crop top? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know that I would wear a belt over the elastic. That feels really bulky. But then again, I don't know if I'd want to wear the elastic with a shirt tucked in. That also feels like it would create like extra, extra bulk where I personally don't want it. Okay, we've got a little sarong, a little knit skirt. Knit, twist, knot skirts that's hard to say with front slit come into lengths view a and b are straight skirts view c is flared okay this is a little sexy thing imagine this on a summer night i like this it's knit so you kind of have like a yoga band situation but it's got some interest to it. It's basics with a twist, my favorite. That's the straight skirt version, a little bit longer length, and then that's the flared one. You could totally also make these as swim cover-ups too. Think of like stretch mesh, 
um, you know, I'm thinking of like those kinds of fabrics you would never wear in anything else other than like leotards and costuming and swimwear, those kinds of things. But this one's really pretty. Here's the line drawings. I love this. A great take on that sort of basic knit skirt that I'm sure early on in your sewing journey you made one or more of. That's really cool. Okay. I like this one. Two-way stretch knit such as interlock and jersey. Elastic for the waistband. It does have only 3 8 inch wide elastic. I really prefer half inch or wider. The wider the better. Um, so I'd be interested to see like where in this it's sewn and if I could go with something a little bit wider I probably would. Um, 4 to 22. So they have the same number of sizes in this one. They've just gone one smaller and then therefore removed one of the higher ones for all the petite girls out there. And then one and a quarter to two and a half yards, depending on the version you're making. Finished hip measurements for the fitted versions only go up to 44 and a half. The flared one obviously goes up higher because it flares. So that's a little womp womp. But it does have negative ease, right? So you got to imagine it's knit. It's supposed to be fitted. So... You know, certainly not inclusive of everyone, of most people probably, but. Oh, but there is a plus size version. Okay, I take it all back. I take it. This is the downside of having misses and women separate is that you just think to yourself, oh, well, won't work for me. And then you realize, oh, there's a plus size version. So that's this here. We can look at it on her. Is this, I wonder if this is the fitted version or the flared version. I'm guessing fitted it does seem a little straight right and they like correct me if I'm wrong but this is a bathing suit right so they have put this on her as a swim cover up but then again she's in a high heel I don't know where she's going in this <laughs> I don't know where she's going or where she's coming from I'm guessing like one of those like beachfront nightclubs maybe oh god I don't know I'm so not cool like that <laughs> Then the same illustrations. Here she is wearing the same skirt, but she's got a little clutch now. So now she's going out to like a nice dinner. I don't know. I'm so bad at this. Okay. Excellent. Here's the swimsuit that she's wearing. It comes in Mrs. and Women's. We'll flip through them. I don't normally have a lot to say on swimsuits because I just I've never made one before so I don't know like is that bad I, I don't know you do get like a high-waisted version like bikini version and then that version with the straps I mean I've been toying around with trying one maybe this for two dollars is the way to go it does have so many options it is cute I don't know I do get like basically three bikinis in one or three bathing suits in one yeah I don't know again I just don't know a lot about swimwear but looks cute to me <laughs> and then we have what is this doll clothes Oh gosh, no, these are for people. No. Yes. Oh man. Okay. I know Laura Ashley, cult following. I get it. I don't really get this, but this is from 1980s vintage Laura Ashley. Ships only to these few countries, I guess because it's only licensed there. Fitted button top with outside seams, front tucks, lace trim, flared peplum and waistline casing with ribbon drawstring. Like, yeah, it's a lot. This this looks like a costume to me. I know Laura Ashley is not a costume. It's actual clothing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. We have another one. This feels more like the Laura Ashley I remember. Vintage reissued sewing pattern, gather, pullover, jumper, or sundress, have shoulder straps, oh, front and back yokes, patch pockets, button back openings, view A has lower ruffle and pocket ruffles, short and long sleeve blouses, have front tuck sleeves with gathered caps, collars, and sleeve ruffles. Oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. It is really cute, right? Like, this is just like that dress I wore in the video last week, um, where it has the straight band across the front and then straps. This one has some gathers here, just like that one does, but it has these huge patch pockets sewn into like this princess seam situation and then this huge gathered ruffle on the bottom. This is it without the ruffle, very wearable. This is it with the ruffle, but without the shirt. And then you have your little shirt. I don't know if it's, that shirt is worth it. That That's a lot of work, that shirt. But the dress is really cute. I love, I love the big pockets. Yeah, oh, this shirt looks really cute in the line drawing. I don't know. Maybe it is worth it. <laughs> Maybe not together, but it does look really cute. All right, and then, is this another one? Vintage reissue sewing pattern, but not Laura Ashley. So it's just an unnamed designer. Back zipper opening, side seam pockets. View A and B are gathered skirts. View A has belt loops. View B has button opening. View C has lacing. Views D and E have flared skirts. View E has contrast band. They don't make patterns with what A, B, C, D, E. Five views very much anymore, do they? Has that like I don't like the skirts with the yokes personally what are the line drawings yeah I'm, 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 yeah I mean okay but I, do we really want this to come back I remember it from the 80s but I don't know that we need all that again All right, and then we have an apron, and then I think we're going to get into, like, kids' clothes. What is this? This is that same little romper, but for little girls. Okay. Why does that look, like, a million times better than the blue one that we saw? So this probably is more what I had in mind when I was talking about, like, a white-on-white -white situation with the trim matching the fabric a little bit better, not being as such a contrast. Look how cool she is. Yeah, like even the illustrations on this girl's version are a lot better. I don't know what happened with the adult version. Adorbs. Okay, then yeah, we have all the little girls and the babies and the dolls and the accessories. So... Garment um, sewing wise, what do we think? It's very, I don't, you know, I don't know. It feels very polarizing to me. Like the things that I really liked, I really liked. And the things I hated, I hated. But at the same time, I'm kind of thinking there are some that look whack in the listing. But maybe my imagination is getting carried away. But I could see looking better than what they did. I don't know. I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this one. It is youthful. It is young and fun. Summery, but like more of like a nighttime summery. And, but also a little bit of fall with all those sleeves. I don't know. It kind of feels confusing, maybe all over the place. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today. Unless Vogue or someone else comes out with a summer collection this week, we'll be back next Friday uh, picking up with our indie sewing pattern reviews. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.